Race number five at Ascot, it is a 56 plus event over the 1600 metres. Mark, some very different form lines to analyse when looking at this race. Yes, Adam, as we get into this card, it gets more and more intriguing. I think we're going to see some good racing on Saturday as well. Replay horses, you mentioned them. Geiger Gem winning two starts ago. Keep an eye out for Kimbo's girl, no say in it. Alum Lefebvre as well. It's cluttered away down on the inside pocketed, take no prisoners, summer trail, no say in it, back and behind them, Kimbo's girl led them at the 200 Geiger Gem though claimed it, now Mega Minx getting a late run for Pike 150 to go, Geiger Gem the leader, Mega Minx closing the margin down on the rail, Geiger Gem in front from Mega Minx and it'll be too good Geiger Gem, great ride. There's a strong performance there by Geiger Gem on that occasion ridden a treat by Peter Hall, since then of course has raced over the 1600 metres was beaten three lengths by Not Again Ken Laid out, but I still thought it was a reasonable performance. They're drawn okay here in Barrier 4. Should get a really nice run. Small question mark. They've had two runs now over 1,600 and haven't placed. And the thing I really liked about that win from Geigage, and we saw in the replay, it was very keen in those middle stages. Peter Hall got it to relax, got it out in clear running in time at about the 550 metre mark. Look, Mega Minx looked the winner uh, on the inside, but uh, look, it was a nice effort for Geiger Gem to kick back. We've uh, got Alum Lefer, of course, was in that race, had to breeze on that occasion, which wasn't ideal, of course. She is still a maiden coming up against some more experienced gallopers, but I think she can get the right run from Barrier 1. Look, I'm with you. I think this race, it's very easy to get sucked into a couple of uh, horses that have raced very well against Wheat Company. For mine, one of those is Kimbo's girl. I think she's a very nice horse, but she looked pretty good against the company she's going. There's horses in here like Rising Sea with listed top of form lines around humanity. Uh, the Swift Platinum is racing against much better horses as well. But I think Alum Lafleur is one that's really going to improve. Barrier 1, the 54 kilos, I love it out at 1600. I think they're just going to get that nice curled up run throughout. Need a little bit of luck at the Belmont Straight and they'll have time to wind up as well. So out of the brigade that are coming out of just Wednesday form lines, I think she's the best chance. Number 4 Rising Sea, of course, returned to the track very impressively last start when leading all the way over 1400 metres. Look, Adam, it's very hard to geld a $100,000 yearling purchase. They've done that, but they're reaping the rewards now. Yeah, and I think they'll continue to reap them as well. This horse was a different animal. was finally switched on and was a really nice performance first up over the 1,400. Goes second up now, the 16. So it's to carry a bit of weight with a 58 and a half, but I think we're going to see a bit of class from him. I know the stable of boys had a good opinion of him, and I think we'll see here. I've got him on top from three Rich Red, which again has really good form lines, eight Persian Princess, and 11 Alum Lafleur. 11 on top for me here, Adam. Alum Lafleur from 10 quarters. Queen B, number three, Rich Red, and four, Rising Sea. Race number six at Belmont, it's over the 2100 metres and Mark intrigued to see how Greg Kersey goes. He's got two runners in this, Fizzamol Wizard and also Magic Rocket and he had Magic Rocket first up which we saw last prep had some really good form lines around the forgotten one. He's got the opportunity now to hopefully win a couple of races with it. Yes Adam, they're both in the quick one week backup as well, uh, more prominently Magic Rocket running second. In came Tycoon Target and well back behind the Magic Rocket bevel down near the rail as Tonka Tough reaches the lead at the 200, Tonka Tough kicked a length and a half in front from by decree battling away tycoon target magic rocket but tonka tough is nicely clear over the final stages and it's another one for tonka tough tonka tough scored by over two lengths magic rocket third it's close resting good performance here by magic rocket as i said in the intro there we know this horse has got a lot of ability injuries have been a small concern with it but the forgotten one form lines are good enough three kilo claim we've seen last start that it appreciated the soft track so i think it can play a bit of a part in this race and just quickly before we go into both of our on top selection that i'm a few come out of that race we saw in the replay there we've got elite flight who just batted away maybe didn't handle the softer conditions we have uh, Fizzma Wizard, as you mentioned, Adam. And Lone Sailor was the fastest last 600. So back out to 2,100 metres here. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he goes. Out of the ones you mentioned, Lone Sailor is the only one I'll be keeping a really close eye on. But still inconsistency and massive concern for me. It'll need to step up against horses like Culver and La Chilla, these types, which have shown that they're genuine Saturday types. And Adam, uh, number three there, Kostya Zilch. Peter Hall rides for Steve Wolf here. Last start effort behind Rosewood Hill was very good. Form lines are very good. Hasn't finished outside the top three in the previous four runs. Uh, should have beaten, or should have gone very close to being striking star at Albany. It was held up the entire time down the rail. Love the way that this horse uh, attacked the line strongly last start. Beaten under two lengths by Rosewood Hill. And when out, was actually probably making the same sort of times as Rosewood Hill. If that was in this race, Rosewood Hill goes around $1.60. Mm. So I do like those form lines. But I think the biggest threat and uh, one of the dangers, despite a very poor record at Belmont, is Colvin from what we saw last start. Again, around Rosewood Hill. Oh, yeah, look, she's an out-and-out -out stay, right? I'm really hoping Randy Tan, only carrying 52.5 kilos, he can get moving early and I think that long straight at Belmont will certainly help his cause, especially from the wide barrier if they uh, 
can get around them. There's a little bit of speed on. I think she can break through here, but she's just an out-and-out -out stayer, a bit of a grinder, but uh, she may get the run to suit. She's just knocking on the door, and this looks to be the right race for her. That's why I've got her on top. Adam, your selections? I'm going to go with number three, Costa Zero. I'm really intrigued to see how number five, Hot Breezer, goes. Is this a genuine Saturday horse? We'll find out here. Number seven, Culverin, for the reasons that you mentioned, and 11, Gaged. I've got number seven on top here, Culverin, from the three, Costa Zilch. Two, on Trisha, racing in great form, that mare, and number five, Hot Breezer. Race number seven at Belmont is the Sky Racing TV Provincial Championship Series final over the 1400 metres. And Mark, really love this race where we get to see the top four of a few races all come together. And there's some really good form lines. The likes of Warjourn racing really well, the Dankster, and of course Helms Gate as well. Yeah, you get some good value in a race such as this as well, Adam. The heat we're going to have a look at though is the Pink Jarrah heat where Helmsgate won after sitting three wide. With Bucktorio going up on the cutaway. Military precision down to the 250. Shaken up in front, the leader. Here comes Harry Thomas, Helmsgate, Capanda. They're starting to chime in as well. Helmsgate, Capanda beat off Harry Thomas at the 100. Helmsgate's in front, going better than them, Helmsgate. This has been a big win. Off the track all the way, Helmsgate, but too good for Capanda. Really good performance there by Helmsgate. Attacked the line strongly, and for mine, a really good lead is that Russian River was also a winner with Glenn Smith on board last start. Now he elects to go with Helmsgate. This is a horse that showed a lot of ability early on the career, then just had a bit of a lull, but has started to be a lot more consistent in recent times. It doesn't have a great Belmont record, but does have a good soft record. So if there's a bit of sting out of the track, I think this horse can run on strongly. Yeah, it's interesting, Adam. I like him here as well, yet none of us uh, have him in our numbers. So look, it'll be uh, an interesting race with plenty of chances. Number four there, though, War Jern. The blinkers go on. Sean McGrady rides for Steve Wolf here. I love that run behind uh, Grey Enigma. It looks to be the strongest form line well, the, as well. The blinkers were meant to be on last starts and a bit of an error there and didn't go on. Uh, I think this is the big difference. So barrier six, love the form lines around Grey. Enigma and also Zipline when winning down at Albany. This horse is going to be where it wants to be. Out in front, just cruising along nicely. As I said, I think the blinkers are different. McGrady takes the ride as well. I think it ticks a lot of boxes that they want to win this race. One of our favourite gallopers as well, Adam Lerpatron. You would have seen it in the replay there. She was just running on late for third once she finally got clear. She just seems to get cluttered up in her races. I think if she can get down the outside into clear running, she'll be one to watch. Just doesn't win out of turn, unfortunately. Well, Peter Hall stays with her. Of course, he was on war journey last time. Barrier seven's ideal for her. She can get back, sit middle field if they want. They sat a little bit closer last time. I think she'd be better. Just a pair back or two. She's got a very good turn of foot. And all I've done here is highlighted the winners in her recent races where she hasn't been too far away. A length around Conceded, which is 72 plus form. A long neck around Patrimonio. Remember Berlin, which is good form lines as well. And Fancy Fox, which has been in listed races. So she's good enough to play a big part in this race. But I'm going with our replay horse. Blinkers on mine is a big difference. Number four word, War Journey from nine, Le Patron, 13, The Dankster, and three, Main Instigator. I've got the four on top as well here, War Journey from number 12 in this lot, nine, Le Patron, and number six, Carpenter. Final race of the day at Belmont. It's a 72 plus event over the 1200 metres mark. The replay that we're going to take a look at is State Solicitor. Now, disappointing, I guess, for punters that were on board, but the form lines have held up with just that natural winning since. Yeah, disappointing from uh, the perspective of the pocket and the bank balance, Adam, but uh, still wasn't a bad run. Let's have a look at State Solicitor and keep an eye out for Mad Brad in behind runners. Of the straight Gigante leveled up to my Greek boy. There's a run for Red Paddy, just act natural. Followed further back by Runley and Run. Pike has to draw the whip on State Solicitor. Just act natural on the outside. My Greek boy, Red Paddy from Runley and Run Gigante. Red Paddy on the inside hits the front. They dive. Red Paddy, I think. Yeah, an interesting performance there by State Solicitor. It's one that I think we've all analysed a fair bit since. And as you mentioned, I think the biggest people that were disappointed were people that might have had money on this horse. So sometimes you just have to step away and take away from the pocket there. Now, the horse that was bumping it the entire time, run, Liam, run, he put in a protest. So you know there was clear interference there as well. Then you're taking this horse was carrying 60 kilos first up as well. I don't care how good it is. That's a big task. Then you go back to last prep, and it was something I mentioned to you a bit. Beat lenience by two lengths and then beat it by a half length. Now, that was carrying 56 and 58, then had to carry the 60 here. Now, lenience hasn't won a race in over 600 days. That's something you just have to store there as well. The winner bottom performance was brilliant. This horse clearly has a lot of upside, and we're winning a lot more races. But... 
I wouldn't be deterred away from that first up run. I think we might see the real state solicitor rock up here. And we'll get a price, and hopefully punters can get their money back from might the first up. by a price. Disappointing <laughs> uh, disappointment there, Adam. Matt Brad, we saw him behind. Looked to be going nowhere at around the 250, 200 metre mark. Then Peter Hall gave it a slap with the whip down the backside, and he really took off. Uh, there was no gap until late, and he actually finished quite close to state solicitor. Uh, finished seventh and well under a length. So I think it was a really nice performance there. Testa Mezzo in here as well returns, Adam. Uh, so Kate Witten takes off three kilos here. The blinkers go on for the first time on this six-year-old. That's an interesting point for me. I didn't think the trials were too bad. He wasn't asked to do too much. No, he wasn't. But for mine, this smells of desperation mm. a little bit. I just think they think testimonies so can't beat them uh, without them. And they're trying to get every incentive they can. I lean towards their mad Brad. If I'm looking at a Ben Pierce runner, I'm with you. I thought the run was really good, actually. Beaten 0.8 lengths. Has a good second up record. Has a really good soft record. And has one of the tracking distance as well. Drawn two. Bar plates come off. There's a lot of ticks there for Mad Brad. We tested Mezzo, abilities there, but there's been so many issues. I think it's more of a hope for them, and let's try to see what we can get this guy to do. But I'm all about state solicitor in this run. Again, it won't be getting my money, but I'm looking forward to seeing how he races. From Mad Brad, Testa Mezzo, and Classical Prince. Three on top for me here as well, state solicitor from number four, Mad Brad. One, Testa Mezzo, and five, Mr. Motown. Time now to turn our attention to the best bets of the card, and Mark, I think we've both got these on top, my best bets. So race four, number one, Military Ruler, and then race Race seven, number four, Wardron. Yeah, out of my best bets, come a bit earlier in the card. Race two, number three, minus looks. And race three, number two, cool passion, I think. They're not sure things, Adam, but certainly a bit of value about those two. As we do say, you can always follow us on social media. You can see that on screen at the moment, our YouTube channel, and also perthracing.com.au. Back at Belmont now, plenty of great events coming up, so make sure you do visit that website and try and get out to course as many times as possible. On behalf of both of us, hopefully we found you plenty of winners. Quick,